Yo, what's up everybody? This is Junior Chicken here, and what do you know, it's been a full 10 years since I've started on YouTube. Back in 2007, I was only 13 and I decided to make a YouTube account, and here I am today. I'd like to reflect on the past 10 years on YouTube through this video. And most of you can already tell probably that my journey on YouTube has mostly been a failure. But, I'm perfectly okay with that. I may be good at recording and editing videos, but I don't necessarily have the eccentric personality or the knowledge of what kind of YouTube videos are popular in order to survive on YouTube, really. But you know, when I started on YouTube, I wasn't looking to become famous, or to make money, or to build a fan base so I could put a play button plaque up on my bedroom wall. I came to YouTube because it was a creative platform where I could express my ideas and just be myself and do what I enjoy doing, which is making videos. And YouTube still is a creative platform where you can post any kind of video you like and share it with the world. Unfortunately, it's become more of a democratic monopoly where only certain videos that most people want to see really blossom, such as Let's Plays, drama videos, and education videos, etc. No one watches my videos anymore, and my 660 subscribers, yes, I've kept count, are not as devoted as they used to be. But it really doesn't bother me that much, because I'm just someone who enjoys making videos and putting them up for the public to see. So I'm just going to keep doing it, even if I don't get views, because I enjoy doing it, that's all that really matters, isn't it? Yeah, a lot has changed on YouTube in 10 years. Different personalities crop up and become famous different layout changes come into play, and I've been making all sorts of different videos throughout the years. I've been changing my intros for my videos, and I've even changed my personal name in these videos. In fact, for the first few years I was doing YouTube, I went under the name Seth. I don't know why, I guess I thought it was a real cool name back then, I didn't think my real name, John, was good enough. But eventually, uh, Sometime in 2010, I believe, I decided to drop the alias and just call myself as my real name, which is John. You may also look back at some of my old videos and notice large gaps in continuity with them. Mainly because I've deleted a ton of videos from my YouTube channel. Probably over half of the videos I've had on my YouTube channel have been deleted. Whether I regretted making them, or copyright claim came up and shut it down, or... I think one of the biggest problems with my videos is just the fact that I always improvise. I don't work off of a script. I just go in knowing what I'm going to be talking about, and what the video is going to be about, and then speak accordingly. As a result, that means I get videos done much quicker, because I don't have to go through a scripting process. But it also means that my videos are less organized. As the years have gone by, I have gotten better with editing, so I do cut out some of the stammering and pauses in my commentary to make it more fluid. But it still is a struggle to do voice work at times, because I'm not working off of a script and I'm trying to present something palpable for the video. I remember when I started off YouTube, I first uploaded videos of me playing Super Smash Bros. Melee on my Wii. I just really enjoyed that game back then, and I thought it would be cool to just show me playing the game on YouTube. Unfortunately, during the time, the audio would be out of sync, because, I don't know, YouTube was still in its early age, and didn't know how to adapt to different formats of videos. I'm not sure exactly. But eventually, I started becoming a bit more serious, and I made a History of Nintendo video. Unfortunately, it wasn't that good. I deleted it, mainly because it was more of an opinionated video with me just talking about the different peripherals you could get with the system. I didn't mention the playing cards that happened before they made video games, and I didn't talk about the games that the systems had and how they aged through their life cycles. It, it wasn't any good quality, to be honest. I continued then to make video game reviews. I wasn't very good at it. All the negative ones I did were mainly rip-offs from other YouTubers that did similar formats, whereas the more positive reviews seemed more like walkthroughs of the game somewhat, rather than actually evaluating the game itself. It's something that my brother wanted me to keep doing, but eventually I stopped making those video game reviews. I wasn't really enjoying making them, 
and I wasn't very good at them to be honest. I also tried to dive into rants during my early years of YouTube, but I wasn't good at that either. I was mainly presenting hollow and stereotypical opinions without any real support to back up my arguments and such, and it became an easy target for trolls to just go after me for. I deleted all of them. A lot of them I regretted making, and even though I feel like I'd be much better at ranting now, I still rather not go through with it just because it's gonna lead to a lot of trolling and wasting time that I don't really want to deal with, you know? Some other things I did during my early days of YouTube were character studies and music parodies, mainly centering around Mortal Kombat. The character studies was where I looked into the characters' stories, and the music parodies were basically I'd pick a song and then pick a Mortal Kombat character and make lyrics based off that character and the, tied to the song. Mortal Kombat became a big focus on videos that I was making back in those days, but after some cyberbullying I experienced on a Mortal Kombat forum, I eventually grew tired of Mortal Kombat and decided to not make videos about it anymore. Don't get me wrong, I still think Mortal Kombat's a cool series and all, I just don't feel the need to be invested in it anymore. Sub-Zero is still my favorite character though. You can also see my brother in quite a few of my YouTube videos. And usually those videos often garnered the most attention because my brother seemed to have more of the YouTube personnel that appealed to people more than me. And I guess I'm perfectly fine with that, I guess. He also started a YouTube channel called We Are Luke's with his other friend who's also named Luke. And they also made video game videos and comedy videos and such like that. Honestly, the funnest videos that I made in my beginner years were probably the ones that I did with other people. Me and my brother and my cousins teamed up and we made funny videos like How to Be Athletic and Bridge of Doom. And they were just so fun to make because we were just having fun, just being silly, being ourselves. And you know, I always tried to get my friends involved with my YouTube channel. And while I continued to make video game reviews and character studies and such, in winter of 2008, I decided to make a video advent calendar. Just like in a regular advent calendar, I would post a video for every day for the month of December until Christmas came along. Unfortunately, not all of them were necessarily quality. I tried to do winter-based themes and introduce other people in these videos. In fact, in both advent calendars, I couldn't produce a video after the 20th day because stuff happened that prevented me from being able to present the video. And eventually after 2009, I couldn't think of enough winter activities or Christmas related activities that I could do for a video advent calendar, so I just stopped it all together. And then for some reason, when 2009 came around, my interest became invested in Bionicles. You know, those awesome figurines that were produced by Lego. They're kind of robots that had joints that move and they have weapons and masks and stuff. And with the relationships I had at school at the time, I decided to make a series called the Protagonist Power League. This is basically about four heroes, each one was either me or one of my friends, and we basically had to take on our rivals and an evil omnipresent villain known as the Deceiver. This was going to be not only a live action video series on my channel, but I also was going to make comic books about it, and it never took off. That was my ambition level back then, that I thought these people who I thought were reliable friends to me would have my back on this and be willing to help me, and it never got fully realized. But even then, I still tried to dive into other things such as Trials, where I basically played a game mode and got a really high score on it, which I challenged my viewers to beat. Then in grade 11, I was introduced to a website called Extra Normal. Extra Normal allowed you to create animations using a script based system. Basically you selected what kind of model set you wanted and you give it a script and it would generate an animation with people talking to each other using automated voices and using certain gestures and such based on what you provided in the script. The main model set I always went with was Playgos and a character by the name of Wendell with black hair, glasses, and a business suit on basically became the mascot of my channel for some time. I made quite a few videos with Extra Normal, more specifically music videos where the characters were dancing and moving to the music and lip syncing with the lyrics of the song. Unfortunately, I lost interest in that and deleted all the videos for that. A few of them probably got copyright strikes as well. 
and Extra Normal became more monetized and you had to pay to use certain model sets and such, so I decided to give up on it. You can still see a few Extra Normal videos on my channel if you decide to go and check them out. Then upon leaving grade 11, I became really ambitious and decided that I would try to make two animated series that would go on Newgrounds. They're basically two Flash series, both of them kind of involving the same thing. A resurrection of the protagonist power leaves, this time involving five heroes fighting against an evil organization and trying to obtain a mask of life to save the world or some shit. And coup d'etat, a sprite based animated series where a refugee and his buddies would go fight back against a tyrannical ruler. Forget about those. They were never realized. Flash is a lot harder than I expected. In fact, I just made the character miles. I didn't even go any further. Flash is obsolete too, so I also thought of the possibility of making my channel more of a network. I was hoping that I'd probably get my brother involved and maybe a few other friends and they could upload videos to my channel whenever they please. But that never got realized either. I also remember in grade 12 I made a few kind of fake commercials for a fictional video game. Once again, those videos you'll never find on my channel either. And I remember once I graduated from high school and started getting used to university, I started making music countdowns. Later down the line, I made improv videos with my buddy Matt. I made them into Whose Line SWC Edition videos, where we basically played different improv games and just had a lot of fun making those videos. Unfortunately, I haven't seen my buddy Matt in quite a few years, and I really wish I could reunite with him someday. But those videos were a ton of fun, and I just kept making them every time I invited my buddy Matt over because, you know, we just had a really good time making those videos and playing those games. Once I finished my third semester of university and started a work term where I would move away from my hometown for about three and a half months, I started another channel that was devoted to making computer science lessons. And I feel like I did a pretty good job with that for the time being. I didn't create a large fan base, but I was able to, in fact, teach some of my friends a bit about programming through my videos. But eventually I started to lose interest in that and I deleted the channel altogether. But I only kept one video, the video I was most proud of, and that is the autism awareness video I made, which in fact educated me too. I learned quite a bit about autism and I basically presented a lot of facts and theories about autism and people famous who have autism. and. I was really proud of that video and I uploaded it a year later to my main channel and I continue to share it every single year around April because April is Autism Awareness Month and it's really important to raise awareness for my cause. But eventually when late 2013 rolled around, I somehow got back into video making mainly because of Pokemon and Smash Brothers, two video game franchises which I love to death brought my spirits back up, and encouraged me to continue making videos. So that's what I did. I started making Pokevlogs to show people how I was doing in Pokemon Platinum, and I started making more countdowns about video games, mainly Smash Bros. I got back in making music countdowns, and even though the Pokevlogs didn't go as well as I'd like, they just kind of stagnated the game for me because I'd have to stop playing the game in order to tell people what was going on in the game. I did still continue making Pokemon videos such as recording me taking down certain bosses in the game and capturing certain legendaries. And I still continue to branch out and make different kinds of videos though I'm mainly sticking with top 10s of my favorite video games and footage of me just playing my favorite video games. I've done live action Charizard skits where I'm just chatting with my plush Charizard and we're just kind of having a good time. I've done what the F is A videos where I try to explain very weird concepts that baffle me, even in stuff I like such as Pokemon and memes. I've tried reaction videos because they're kind of a simple format. You just record yourself watching something and I try not to be bland and really be expressive when I make those videos. And even recently in the past year during late April, I joined Vine and actually started making Vine videos, which were fun while it lasted. Eventually Vine had to close down shop and turn into the Vine camera and 
Yeah, I just really enjoy making videos. And as you can tell right now, I'm making top 10 videos of my favorite Pokemon for each type. And that series is going to keep on going as long as I'd like it to. And while my channel is mainly focused on Pokemon stuff now, I'm just going to continue to make videos that I enjoy. This is my channel, and this is the platform where I can express myself and just be me. Honestly, I can only really see two big enemies that I've had to encounter throughout my journeys on YouTube. The first obviously being the trolls and hateful people that I've had to encounter who feel the need to waste my time and post mean things towards me or people I know in one of my videos. I thought I knew how to take care of them before, but really I didn't. I think the only real way to fight a hater is just to troll back, which I'm not the best at doing. I'm hopefully getting better at it, but yeah, hateful comments don't really bother me anymore like they used to. I don't really care if people don't like my videos. They can just watch another video for all I care. Second enemy, which is much harder to overcome, is the copyright claims. Yes, I do use commercialized music in some of my videos, but a lot of times I feel like I'm following the fair use policy. I'm using this material as a means of review and criticism or parody or satire. As you can probably see in plenty of my videos, such as the music countdowns that I made and the music parody videos that I made. Some of my most anticipated videos have gotten shut down because of copyright claims. And I feel it's really unfair that creators like me have to suffer because we prefer a specific kind of music. And you could probably argue that I could fight back against these copyright claims and possibly win, but seeing that I don't really have a devoted fan base, I don't feel like it'd be worth the time and effort to try and dispute these claims. That's just me. But anyways, that's all I gotta say about my 10 years of YouTube. I hope you enjoyed it. You can go ahead and click that the subscribe button if you'd like, if you want to see more of my videos. I'm not necessarily rushing on my top 10 favorite ice type Pokemon countdown right now. That's going to take some time to develop, so you're going to have to wait for that. But I do have a video of me capturing Sogaleo and Pokemon Sun, as well as some other videos planned for you up ahead. So I hope you're looking forward to those. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.